This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. Tonight, we are learning new details about another death inside the St. Louis City Justice Center and a jail oversight board member who was cited for trespassing following that death. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Ann Allred. All this follows several incidents and deaths surrounding the city jail recently. Our Christine Byers is live outside the city jail where the inmate was rushed to the hospital early Thursday. Christine. And this was the eighth death from include, involving a CJC inmate within the past 16 months and the second involving an inmate in just the past week. The facility was also rocked by violence just about two weeks ago when inmates took a guard hostage. Now the civilians that are charged with overseeing the facility are demanding more transparency from city leaders who are supposed to fix it. Janice Menza is the vice chair of the Detention Facilities Oversight Board. I was shocked. I was confused because there was uh, the death of Carlton Bernard just the, the Sunday before. City leaders have said only that a second CJC inmate died at a hospital early Thursday. Five on Your Side confirmed with a family member that the inmate was Terrence Smith. He was 55 years old and had been in jail awaiting trial for murder since January. He was taken to a hospital early Thursday after inmates told staff that he was having a medical emergency. He was pronounced dead at the hospital. Five on Your Side has obtained internal documents showing jail commissioner Jennifer Clemens Abdullah did not notify police of the death until four hours later. Menza went to the CJC Thursday night shortly after learning of the death, demanding more information. I wanted to find out for sure if there was really uh, an eighth death in 16 months, in a 16 month period, I, I needed to know. Instead, Menza left in handcuffs with a citation for trespassing. I'm on the oversight board, they didn't care. They, they handcuffed me, they treated me terribly. It doesn't matter who you are, if you work for the city, if you're volunteering for the city, if you're detained by the city. Now, just within the past hour, Board of Aldermen President Megan Green issued a statement calling for a change in leadership at that jail and calling the number of deaths there appalling. We're waiting to hear back from the mayor's office. Live outside the City Justice Center, Christine Byers, five on your side. Tonight, restrictions at a high school football game in Illinois. This comes after several fights broke out at an Alton High School earlier this week. Five on your side, Mercedes McKay is live in Alton and Mercedes. We understand students stayed home from school today. Kelly and Ann, Alton High School students actually learned remotely today, and this comes after yesterday when classes were completely canceled. Now tonight, not everyone will be allowed inside these gates, sitting in these stands behind me to cheer on their team. It's all because of a series of fights that broke out at the school on Wednesday. This is one of the many videos circulating on social media that caught the violence in action. The district says administrators, staff and law enforcement responded immediately. No students were seriously injured and no weapons were involved. Because of this, school officials are restricting the number of people who can attend tonight's football game. No outside fans will be allowed and only immediate family members of players, the cheer team and marching band can come inside. One parent told us that this violence has been a problem for years now and she's upset it's come down to this. Over the course of like you know, 10 to 11 years that my kids have been in the middle school or the high school, I haven't seen any change. And, and not only have I not seen change per se, it hasn't gotten better, it's, it's progressively gotten worse. It's kind of removing that high school experience for our kids. Um, it's just really sad. In a statement, the district said in part, quote, we deeply regret that these senseless events caused by a small group of students disrupted the school environment to such a high degree. Now, the Alton Education Association is planning a rally about an hour and a half, an hour and a half from now, so about 30 minutes before the game starts. Students, parents, and even some teachers will be wearing red in support of safer schools for everybody. We'll hear from their president coming up at six. Live in Alton, Mercedes McKay, five on your side. And tonight's football game between Vashon and Cardinal Ritter has been postponed. St. Louis Public Schools say there was an altercation at Vashon today with threats being made. Leaders are working with Cardinal Ritter on a new date. A 17-year-old is now charged as an adult for killing a 16-year-old in North St. Louis County. Zachariah West is charged with murder, attempted robbery, and armed criminal action. Prosecutors say last September, West arranged a meeting with the victim, Tavion Whitby, to buy marijuana. 
Instead, he allegedly robbed Whitby while he was inside a car on Eldor Drive and shot him. That car later crashed into a pole on Spanish Pond Road. West is now behind bars on a $500,000 cash-only bond. Let's talk about our Labor Day weather. It's another beautiful summer day around St. Louis, but I knew it wouldn't last, Gary Frank, and the heat is returning. Yeah, it's, it's going to come back. We know it pretty much throughout September. Even October, it can get a little warm, right? But the last couple of mornings where you started off in the 50s in some cases, even 40s, well, that's going to be behind us pretty quickly as we start to warm up, but let's enjoy what we can while we're at there right now. There's not much going on, and if you're just getting ready to travel or you plan to this evening or tomorrow morning, anywhere you drive, you're fine. Anywhere you fly within the region, you're fine as well. It's pretty quiet locally. Temperatures, though, holding steady in the low to mid-80s. It's not as humid, and that's a big key for us. 84 with low humidity, that's what feels really nice. The southeast breeze at 9 miles an hour. Gradually, that will turn to the south over the next couple of days and start to increase our mugginess, but you won't feel it this evening. Temps in the mid-80s, eventually in the 60s by 10 o'clock. So if you're going to those football games, you have outdoor plans, pack another layer. You'll be able to put it away over the next few days. We'll talk about how hot it gets, what it feels like, and when we'll see our next chance for rain. And for the latest weather first forecast, just text the word weather to 314-425-5355. A 12-inch water main break caused some minor flooding in the Central West End. This was the scene near Lindell and Boyle earlier. The city says crews will make those repairs today. A family-owned restaurant in South St. Louis is closing its doors. Owners of the original Crusoe's announced the news earlier this week. Decina Cornell learned today, though, not all hope is lost. For 44 years, Crusoe's has been in South St. Louis City. The original owner, Steve Limmer, bought the building in 1979, and his daughter has kept it up and running. The restaurant, which sits on Osceola Street, is known for its fried chicken. But now it's garnering attention for its recent announcement. Stevie Lachance announced the restaurant would be closing. Earlier this week on Facebook, the owner wrote, it was one of the hardest things their family had to do. Lachance said it was a rough summer. Power outages and loss of food paired with equipment malfunctions and COVID-19. It was a disastrous recipe for them to handle. Now they'll continue to operate until they go through their inventory. Lachan said since their social media post, the support has been overwhelming. I just want people to remember we're here. You know, I think that sometimes it's, we're kind of off the beaten path and it's hard for people to like remember us and we're still here and we're still fighting. Lachan says that she will give her business a chance. If there is enough support, they will consider keeping their doors open. Now there is a GoFundMe to help the business. If you're interested in helping, you can head to our website, case2k.com and go to the section as seen on TV. Justina Cornell, five on your side.